A couple of videos back in this series, I tested Canon's old EF 24 to 105 millimeter F4L ISUSM lens. And while it wasn't exactly the worst lens out there, or the worst lens that I've seen in any, all of these tests, it was not a very good performer either. Then again, that's pretty much what I would expect from a lens that was designed for still photography in a time that predates the whole concept of hybrid video cameras and shooting video with still lenses. However, the real reason I wanted to test that lens was because I also have its more modern counterpart, or most modern counterpart, I should say, the RF 24-105mm f4L IS USM lens. And I thought it would be a rather interesting look to see how those two lenses compare and how Canon has maybe optimized their newer lens in the era of hybrid cameras and video. Now to cut to the chase, the results are precisely what you would expect for a popular lens that is aimed at video shooters on a hybrid platform that's popular with those shooters. It's vastly improved over its nearly 20 year old counterpart. Now, if you're new to all of this, you might be wondering what the heck this guy is talking about. What is breathing and why should I care about it? I mean, clearly your lens is plastic and glass. It's not metal or it's not flesh and blood. It doesn't breathe, right? Well, put simply, breathing is the term we use to describe a change in angle of view that accompanies focusing. This is an aberration that's a problem for video shooters where the change in composition while focusing can become very distracting. Now, fortunately, purpose-built video and cinema lenses are designed not to do this. Unfortunately, for most of us using hybrid or still lenses on our mirrorless cameras, almost all of our lenses still suffer from this aberration to some extent. Now, with that said, my testing procedure for this is actually very straightforward. I stick a pair of white targets, they're really just bits of gaffer tape, on a black background. I then position my camera so that those two targets are located near the edges of the frame, but not off of it. I then use my camera's focus bracketing function to produce a series of images starting at the minimum focus distance and shooting out towards infinity. Now for completeness, the test images are all made as small JPEGs, so technically any size would work. Now, since there aren't any advantages to using RAW in these tests, I don't. I do, however, have distortion correction enabled, as I think that's a better reflection of how these lenses will actually be used normally, and because there are an increasing number of lenses out there that simply will not let you disable it, and I think that makes a better, fair, or more fair comparison. Now, the real magic in all of this path process happens on the computer. I take those JPEG images and I feed them into some software that I wrote that measures the distance between the target centers in each frame, and then ultimately compares them to the last image that was taken, which should be at infinity focus if everything was done properly. Now, since the infinity focus position tells us the lens's true angle of view, I can compare each frame to the infinity frame to determine how much the angle of view is changing as the lens is focused closer. I can then plot that against things like focus distance, focus position, or really anything that I wanted. So let's take a look at this lens, and we'll start our look at this lens at the widest zoom position of 24 millimeters. Now here we see, or at least I saw in my testing, a maximum angle of view shift of less than 1% in the wider direction when the lens is focused at its closest focusing position compared to when it's focused at infinity. This means that you're effectively shooting with a 24 millimeter focal length at all focus positions with this lens. Now, normally this is where I would also introduce another metric to, I, that I use in these videos. That is that of the 2% threshold distance. The idea behind it is that a small amount of breathing is often not significant enough to become a distraction in, if it's, you know, small. To represent that, I chose 2% as a threshold, as I found that kind of is not really a problem or not really noticeable in my testing or in practice. However, at this focal length, this lens doesn't ever reach that 2% threshold, so there's no point in talking about it. Stepping out to the next mark focal length on the lens, we come to the 35 millimeter zoom position. Now here, the direction of breathing has actually changed. We're now looking at a, a we're now looking at a narrowing or narrowing effect or the lens being more telephoto than being wider. However, the total amount of breathing that was measured was less than one or 0.3% across the board. In short, breathing at this focal length is essentially non-existent. 
So with nothing else to talk about at the 35 millimeter position, we'll move on to the 50 millimeter zoom position. Here, breathing is slightly higher than the first two zoom settings, but still under 2% across the entire focusing range. And like the 35 millimeter position, the angle of view shift is tighter or more telephoto. Now, this means that when focusing at the close focus position, you'll see an angle of view that's similar to maybe a 51 per, uh, millimeter lens, assuming that it all was worked out perfectly. And again, since breathing is under 2% throughout the whole range, there's nothing else to talk about at the 50 millimeter position. Moving along to the 70 millimeter zoom position, and surprising to me at least, the performance is almost identical to the 50 millimeter position. At its worst, the angle of view shift is still less than 2% tighter at the infinity or than at infinity focus, and given that, you have the effect of a 71.4 millimeter angle of view if everything was perfect. Which takes us now to the 85 millimeter position. And here we reach the first focal length that the lens exceeds that 2% threshold I talked about earlier. The maximum angle of view shift is 2% tighter when compared to infinity focus. That results in the equivalent angle of view as if the lens was an 86.7 millimeter lens at that close focusing position. And of course, since the maximum now exceeds 2%, we can finally talk about that 2% threshold distance, which in this case occurs at a mere one meter or three feet away from the camera. Now that brings us to the final zoom position on this lens, 105 millimeters. And at 105 millimeters, the lens fares slightly worse than it did at 85 millimeter. However, it's still extremely good. I measured the maximum angle of view shift of less than 3.8%. Again, with the angle getting or angle of view getting tighter or more telephoto at the close focus position. At 3.8%, that translates to having the equivalent angle of view of a 109 millimeter lens, again, assuming everything was perfect when this is focused at that minimum focus distance. Now, as for that 2% per percent threshold, that happens at just 85 centimeters or just under 2.8 feet from the camera. So with the data in, what can we make of all of it? Well, the short of it, at least as far as breathing is concerned, is that this is an excellent lens. At 70 millimeters and below, breathing is so minimal that there's no concern at all with it. And even above 70 millimeters, the angle of view shift is still so small that it should never end up being a distraction in your footage. Now, of course, with performance like this, it's compact, lightweight package, a really solid zoom range from 24 to 105 millimeters, a strong optical image stabilization system that turns in up to five stops of stabilization when used on an unstabilized camera. Well, it's really no wonder why this is such a popular lens in run and gun video applications, because it kind of is good. So with that said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to help this and support this channel, you can help us by liking and sharing this video. You can also support us directly by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.